Hey everyone, happy Wednesday, and welcome to our weekly DAT COVID-19 market update. This is our update for May 13th, 2020. I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT. We're going to be joined today by Ned Damon, who's our Principal Data Scientist, and we'll also have a interview with Mike Abood um, to fill us in on some carrier um, perspective. Uh, Ned, how are things in Oregon this week? Um, there were a couple of days of sunshine, but now we're back to the the lovely Oregon drizzle. So um, you know you don't you don't move here if you don't like the rain. So I'm I'm more than happy with it. Uh, we got a lot of interesting content that we're going to be going through today. Uh, we're going to be starting by uh, talking about load to truck ratios, how drive in and reefer load to truck ratios have rebounded to about 2019 levels, which is wonderful. We'll be talking about market conditions and how they're hot in the primary produce areas. We'll be talking about reefer rates re leading recovery with drive in rates showing some significant upside. Then we're going to be looking at our model suite. We're going to be talking about how um, they're all kind of positive for this week, which is fantastic. And then, uh, like you said before, we've got our guest, Mike Abood, who's going to be talking about uh, some interesting stuff for smaller carriers and brokers. Ken? Thanks, Ned. So diving right into market dynamics, um, I want to talk a little bit about dry van load board activity. So looking at the load to truck ratio for dry vans this week, um, good news is we're sitting right about 2019 levels. This is um, third week in a row where we've seen some you know, growth there. Again, not as high as we would have hoped to have been this time of year, but um, following some seasonal trends, we hope to see some prolonged growth. Flipping to reefers, we can see that we're actually a little bit above 2019 levels um, and kind of at the base of where the seasonal hockey stick would start for the year, um, which again, is good news, but it, the story remains mostly that we've kind of starting at a point below uh, pre-COVID levels. Uh, talking about market conditions, and just as a refresher, market conditions is sort of the the nationwide barometer of relative heat or coolness in a market um, and allows you to compare markets against each other. So I have here the dry van MCI from yesterday for um, North America. So what we look at is Southern California and the southeastern United States uh, really are points of strength um, in this week's map. Uh, we're starting to look at an area kind of in the greater Philly region uh, for a couple of reasons. One, sort of a uh, new entrant into the, the warmth category, but then also um, a hot spot for COVID uh, to see sort of what's happening there. So we'll be watching that closely over the next um, couple of weeks. Uh, looking at reefer, again, same trend as last week, uh, if not brighter. So Southern California, Southern Arizona, South Texas, um, and basically the entire Southeast lit up very hot. Um, what we'll expect is as we spring rolls into summer, that heat to rise northward as we have harvests of different uh, produce move with the temperature northward. Um, talking real quickly about rates, um, you know, based on all the positivity we're seeing in the market dynamics, we would expect to see uh, positive trends in rates. And luckily that is what we're seeing. So on the dry van side, we've talked a lot about bouncing off of this bottom. We haven't seen a tremendous bounce, but we've definitely seen a bit of a recovery. I think a lot of that is due to us overshooting a bit, the key support level. We've talked about that previously, but we're sort of hovering right around 2016 levels for dry vans. Um, but again, looking at the short-term view, there is uh, continued signs of upward pressure on rates. We still have you know, 10 to 12 cents of gap to close between now and where we were last year. And that's something we'll watch closely over the next few weeks. Reefers are a bit of a different story. And if you know anyone tells you that rates aren't very seasonally affected or that you know historical context isn't important, I think this would be a great chart to show them um, to prove that that is in fact not true. What we see here is a sharp snapback due to seasonality on the reefer side. We're sitting right about where we were in 2017, blowing past um, 2016 rates. And again, we should continue on this sort of jagged upward line through the end of June into July. You know, there'll be down weeks, there'll be up weeks, but largely we expect the seasonal pressures to continue um, over the next couple of weeks and a couple of months. Short term, I, I like this because it compresses the y-axis a bit because we're just comparing two years. But what you see is the, the short term, the three-day moving average, essentially statistically indifferent from where we were last year, and the longer seven-day weighted moving average, just a couple of cents of where we were last year. 
So if you can look at last year's pattern, you see that's kind of, again at the base of the hockey stick. We'll continue to watch rates this year, and then as states start to open up, to see um, how that's going to trend. And to give us some more color on how all of these trends are impacting the smaller carrier or the owner operator, um, we're going to spend some time talking with Mike Abood and getting his perspective um, on the impact again from the small carrier. Thanks for having me, Ken. Happy to be here. Mike has spent over 25 years in the trucking industry holding senior leadership positions and managed thousands of independent contractors and owner operators during his time in industry. How are you holding up during the quarantine? Uh, I, I, I'm excited to get back to what may be the new normal and uh, also uh, optimistic. Uh, I, I do think there are good things ahead. Um, we just have to get through some of these difficult times. So I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. I think we're all excited to kind of get outside and, you know, get out of our houses. All right. So diving right in, um, you know, there's a lot in the media right now about low rates and, you know, just, you know, no longer than a month or so ago, um, all the talk was about high rates uh, related to the restocking blitz um, for grocery items and pantry items. So it, it seems like the real issue is volatility. Uh, so my question is, how can owner operators best position themselves to deal with the volatility present in this market? Yeah, Ken, um, what I'll tell you is I think information is important in, in these situations. So uh, carriers, uh, customers, owner operators all have access to uh, large amounts of data. So everybody focuses on the data. One of the things I'd like to focus on right now is in the times of volatility, What's really important are the relationships that owner operators are building with either their end customers, a broker, or a carrier that they work with on a regular basis. It's those relationships that help set the stage for future business. You know, if you're, if you're building a relationship with a broker and, and you, you, you work with them once or twice in a month, uh, it, it becomes difficult for them to be a loyal broker. And so what I like to tell people is build those relationships, spend the time to understand what the needs of that business is, and then make sure that you, you work with those people day in and day out so that, they, that you become an important part of their business and yours. Yeah, for sure. We've seen clear evidence that folks, um, especially on the broker and shipper side, are more inclined to kind of take care of their, their core group of carriers that they have a relationship versus their transient carriers, for sure. All right, so we know this market is cyclical, um, both over the longer term, but as well as in these situations over the near over the near term. So, is there any way that an owner operator or an independent contractor can prepare for these eventual downturns in the market? Yeah, so so what I'll tell, and I've I've talked to literally thousands of owner operators over the course of the years, and the one thing I can tell you is the cyclical nature of this business is not going to go away. There will be ups and there will be downs. And so one of the best things that, and best pieces of advice that I can provide uh, owner operators out there is you wanna plan for these things. You're going to want to, in the middle of a great year, maybe 17 and 18 were really strong years where you were seeing great rates per mile, but you're going to want to pause and think and run a good solid business and look into the future and plan for those downturns. Now, I don't think anybody could have planned what was going to happen this year. And so the best advice is look ahead and anticipate the cyclical nature of the business. And that gets good advice. Um, you know, there's more, we, we talk a lot about rates and you read a lot about rates and rates largely have to do with revenue. But, you know, as we all know that with any business, there's more than just revenue. You also have the cost side. Um, is there anything that owner operators specifically can do to help optimize their, their cost structure um, and become more efficient? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ken, my advice, and, and this would be advice for people within the transportation world or even outside the transportation world, but let's focus on, let's focus on trucking for a while. Um, the best thing that you can do is understand and know your costs and do what you can to manage those costs, right? It, it sounds simple and it's good common business practice. But when you really get into it, this is where uh, I'll say the gut check happens. Are you running a good, solid business? And so things like fuel cost or maintenance costs or, or upgrades to equipment. But let's focus on maintenance and let's focus on fuel for a second. Are you taking advantages of the best fuel discounts that are out there, even though you may not like that truck stop? Are you taking advantage because saving a few cents a gallon is an important cost savings in your business. Are you doing your routine maintenance? 
even though it's some money out of pocket, but when that broker calls or that carrier calls, it's important that your equipment is up and running because they want you to respond immediately. And so I would say, do the basics within your business, but cost is an important piece to focus in on. Yes, the revenue side has some fluctuations. Um, some of that you may or may not be able to control, but what you can control in your business is the cost side. Yeah, I think that pivots into to my next my next question, which I, I've heard you a lot uh, previously talk about diversifying your business as a carrier. Um, can you talk to a little bit about more what that means, kind of specifically? Sure. Uh, my experience tells me that in the in the owner operator world, um, over time, what happens is you go into this business and say, "This is a big business. I want as much business as I can get my hands on." So you're wide open to anything that comes your way. And then over time, what happens is you decide, hey, I don't like going to Canada or going into New York with my tractor is not really appealing to me. Or for my business to be successful, I need to stay east of the Mississippi. I get all those. I understand those completely. But I think in situations like this, it's important that as a business, you think differently. You start to expand those boundaries a bit because right now it's important to get miles and good revenue. And certainly I can tell you that people aren't readily going to Canada or do they still don't want to go. And so now would be the time to start thinking about expanding your, your competencies in those areas. So for example, do you take TSA shipments? Well, go get your certification, get that done. Or have you said in the past, I'm not running hazmat? Well, there's quite a bit of hazmat freight out there. So go get your hazardous endorsement so that you open up possibilities as opposed to shutting possibilities down. No, I think that's really great. And I think it, it, it expands both the pool of shipments that you're eligible to take. And then typically speaking, those less desirable shipments come with higher rates. That's, that's exactly right, Ken. Yeah. Any other tips or comments um, for the carriers listening to this? Yeah. Uh, what I would tell people is, and I'm a, I'm a glasses half full kind of person. Um, certainly um, this is a difficult time for everybody. Very difficult for everybody. And, and, and certainly as, as a business owner, I actually respect independent contractors more than you could ever know. They've taken a chance, they've put themselves out there. And th these are folks that are doing what they love to do and they're trying to run a successful business. And so what I'll tell you though, is great businesses face these challenges and they face them head on. They try to be creative, they try to adjust, they try to adapt to what's going on and then they focus on the future and move forward. You can get lulled into looking at what's happening to me today, and then you get stuck and you get mired in today. I think as business owners, we need to really start to look forward. This situation will end. This difficult time will come to an end. And so will you be prepared for when it does rebound? Be creative, adjust and adapt right now. Yeah, for sure. So I want to first thank thank you, Mike, for coming on and sharing your insight um, and your your hard earned experience. And I also want to say I've worked with you long enough to know that you share the sentiment that we're you know we're very grateful um, for the for the trucker for the the small business owner in the transportation space. Trucking is not an easy profession, even during the best of times. Um, and we're seeing countless examples of folks sacrificing their own safety and health um, to ensure that America is moving. So uh, from both of us, from DAT, we just want to say thank you for that um, and echo to be safe out there. So thanks again, Mike. Um, and we'll turn it back to Ned. Well, that was uh, really interesting. I guess I hadn't really considered the extent to which um, small carriers and are really affected by just sort of small business dynamics. You've got this kind of dual job where you're you're driving and you're also running a small business. And so having that kind of cushion and being able to build up that cushion seems really important. Yeah, there really is a difference between a smaller owner operator or, you know, three to five, maybe even 10 truck fleet compared to the larger corporate carriers. They don't have the, the cushion, as you described it, to absorb the volatile shocks that can happen in our market. And it was really great to get that perspective. Um, Ned, do you want to take us through what the models are showing for this week? Certainly. So um, here we have our dry van model that was run yesterday. Um, in the blue line, you can see the... Uh, actual transactions 
And then uh, often to the right, you can see our model suite that are forecasting what we expect to be going on with actual transactions. Uh, you can see that we've replaced in our uh, model suite the pessimistic model with the more short-term model. Um, it's still kind of fundamentally the same model, but um, because things are looking up, we've um, it's starting to behave more optimistically, and so it's not really a pessimistic model anymore. Uh, you can see that all the uh, Forecasts basically agree that things are going to be flat to up, although the short term hasn't quite caught up with what the levels are. But the trend for the short term forecast is flat, whereas the rate cast trend is up and to the right uh, slightly, which I think is, is really solid. Um, next, we've got that same forecast, except for a reefer. Uh, again, same lines where the actual transactions are in blue and then our forecasts are in the uh, beautiful array of colors <laughs> off to the right. Uh, one of the things that I think is that the short-term model is maybe a little bit too op optimistic here. Um, I will eat my hat on television if reefer rates are 220 in the middle of, of June, despite the fact that they are on an upward tear. And um, you can see that that rate cast model is, is trending up and to the right, but in a more moderate controlled way that I think is probably a little bit more indicative of what we expect to be seeing, even though reefer trends are definitely going to be positive and driven by that seasonal pressure. Uh, finally, we have our new entrant for this week, which is flatbed. Here you've got a lot of model harmony, which is wonderful. I love it when things agree. Uh, the short term and the rate cast model are, are very much in alignment about the, the kind of slow measured up into the right and those blended forecasts in the middle are um, more or less uh, staying true to each other because again, there, there's a lot of agreement because of that capital intensive nature of a lot of the, the flatbed loads that are being carried. Um, so that's it for our forecast models. Ken, do we have a question for this week? Yeah, we do. But first, I, I think we'd all be very entertained by watching you eat a hat on our video series. So um, I'm sort of rooting I've got, for that. I've got my TAT hat right here, and I'm you know well prepared to season it with some barbecue sauce and, and go to town if it hits that. Um, fingers are crossed. So hey, um, uh, some uh, our question this week is pertaining to Raycast, and we've had actually had over three million. Um, hits so three million rate queries ran um, in our product since releasing it in the beta um, just a little while ago and this is a question that we've gotten a couple of times and i wanted to see if you'd be able to help us ned is the fuel surcharge included in the rate cast rate sure that's a good question so uh we've got here a real rate cast search from pittsburgh to houston um, you can see that in the top right, in the gray, we have our rate view rate, which says $1.27 in the white. And down at the bottom left, you can see our rate cast rate, which says $1.06. And so there seems to be a lot of disagreement between those two. But uh, the fact is that our rate cast rate does not include fuel surcharge. Um, we figure that a lot of folks are using this for RFPs or they have their own um, fuel surcharge program. And so we back out our fuel surcharge from our forecasts. And um, so that rate cast rate is without the fuel surcharge. So if you look at the spot rate up in the top right corner, that rate view rate, um, and you subtract off the 19 cents of fuel surcharge, you can get to $1.08 a mile. And that lines up pretty closely with the rate cast rate of $1.06 a mile. Do you think that answered the question, Ken? Yeah, for sure, Ned. Thank you. Um, so wrapping things up for the week, I just want to direct everyone to DAT.com slash COVID-19 for our comprehensive updates and um, commentary uh, as we as we provide them. Also, askiq at dat.com, any questions that you may have, as well as our DAT Daily 50 Lane Report, which has the seven-day historical data as well as our seven-day rate cast data. And then also like and subscribe. It's the best way to be notified when we have new content. And you know, leave a comment below. It's the you know we'd love to hear from our viewers, uh, things you like, things you don't like, and suggestions for future topics and guests. So uh, thanks again. Be safe, and we look forward to talking to you next week. Take care, everybody. Stay positive.